Cool. Well, thank you everyone for uh, coming to my session here. Today I'm going to be talking about the interactive enhancements to PowerShell. Uh, my name is Stephen Bucher. I am part of the uh, PowerShell product team and one of my main responsibilities on the team is the interactive improvements to PowerShell. And uh, that includes uh, owning the PS uh, read line module as well as some other uh, improvements that we've been making to the engine to help improve the interactivity of the shell. And so I'm gonna go into all sorts of things. Um, we got a, a pretty packed agenda. I'm gonna talk about PS read line, some improvements, some predictive intelligence stuff that we've been doing still. Uh, and then I'm gonna spend probably most of the time talking about this new thing that we're calling feedback providers. This is something that we're building into the engine that uh, can help provide feedback uh, to users as well as something that you can utilize to help encourage uh, folks in your organizations or um, even yourself, you know, as a reminder. Um, but I'll talk more about that later. And then I'll talk uh, about some other improvements that are coming to PowerShell uh, that are feedback providers. Uh, this includes uh, stuff around command not found exceptions. So just little like uh, quality of life improvements that we're making to the shell over time. And then I'm gonna talk about this thing called PowerShell adapters, which is a module that we published uh, middle of last year that helps translate native command text to PowerShell objects so you can kind of uh, manipulate native commands like you would expect PowerShell objects and commandlets. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about this. Um, also feel free to interrupt me for any questions or anything I can clarify. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of different things so um, wanna make sure uh, that we, um, I answer all your questions. So. First thing I want to start out with is a little bit of the philosophy of what what kind of improvements we want to make to the shell. And it's not something that we can radically, completely, you know, overhaul the experience for. The CLI is a very common, you know, it's a very standard experience that everyone has. But essentially, what I believe is, is the shell should help you. Simple as that. Like, we want to help improve the lives of folks working in an operations. And a big part of that is improving your life in the interactive CLI experience. So while you're at the shell, working with your commands, working on finding things, we want to be able to help you then as much as we can. And this means, you know, helping you kind of before you hit enter and also like after you hit enter, but whether it be you hit an error or you've hit some kind of success, perhaps you, there's a better way to do this so we can help kind of assist you. And so um, we, we know that there's this kind of loop of you typing commands uh, hitting enter, getting an error, or getting a success, working with the uh, with the content of the output, and keep going on that cycle. And so we want to make sure that we capture uh, ways that we can help you in that cycle uh, going forward. So um, PS Readline is the module that kind of helps you with the stuff before you hit enter, and then feedback providers is the area that we are investing in to help you after you hit enter. And um, another core philosophy of PowerShell is because we are a platform tool, we want to make sure that these capabilities are extensible to everyone and so that people can build their own predictors or feedback providers and uh, be able to use them for their specific capabilities. So you can basically kind of do whatever you want with these features. Um, that will make more sense as I actually show off the stuff. Um, so uh, let's talk about PS Readline. Um, in case you're not familiar with PS Readline, PS Readline is just an inbox PowerShell module that helps improve the CLI experience of PowerShell. This uh, includes improvements like syntax color highlighting, uh, menu complete, key handlers, uh, color changes, like all sorts of stuff um, in PS Readline that incorporates it. Uh, PS Readline incorporates it into your shell by default, so you get this awesome, colorful shell experience. Um, is everyone familiar with PS Readline, Predictive IntelliSense? Okay. Um, but uh, one, of the, one of the big, big features that we brought with PS Readline is this thing called Predictive IntelliSense. And I alluded to it a little bit at the state of the shell presentation, but Predictive IntelliSense is really the area that we're trying to assist you before you hit enter. Trying to predict what you're typing based on what you've previously typed or as well as modules that bring in new things that you've never typed before that you can try to uh, assist you and, and accelerate your uh, experience typing in the shell. Um, so we have two kinds of predictors. We have the history predictor and then we have plugin predictors. History is pretty straightforward. It just tries to predict 
what you're going to type based on what you previously typed, right? You, I'm sure you've run all sorts of the, the same commands over and over again, and so it's just easier when you have those longer commands instead of just you know, typing them out and, or going up arrow like a million times to try to find it again. Start typing it, hit the right arrow key, and you'll get the whole thing uh, accepted to you uh, that easily. Um, so that is enabled by default in PowerShell. Um, I believe it was uh, starting like PowerShell 7.3, it was enabled, but it's it default in any future PowerShell 7 uh, versions. Um, and then the other kind of predictors are the plugin predictors. And these are the, the extensible piece of, of the puzzle where people can create PowerShell modules that tie into this interface that we've exposed in PowerShell to be able to give predictions that you've never ever typed before. And this is where some really, really cool things uh, like AI and machine learning can come into place uh, with uh, this kind of um, area. But uh, plugin predictors and history predictors are the two main kinds of predictions. Um, but why don't we just jump into a demo? I feel like that's probably the best way to really show, show off this um, experience. So I'm just in my PowerShell terminal here. Uh, let's do, so um, you'll see here this, <laughs> very simply, these are predictors. This grayed out uh, text that you see after I've just typed G is the last command that I've typed starting with G. Um, it's, that's pretty simple. And so as I start typing, say like I start typing and I don't want that one, I actually want get help. It knows that I typed get help previously. You know, it will fuzzy, it will match against what you've last typed and um, yeah. Uh, the, there's, there's two kinds of views that we have with predictors um, because you've, you've typed a lot of different things in your history. You may not, the last thing may not be the most relevant thing to you. Um, so what we call this view here is what we call inline view and the other view is called list view. So I'm gonna press F2 here. I'm gonna type G again and you'll notice I have a lot more uh, predictions showed up to me in this kind of list view that I can navigate through with my right arrow key and I can um, take a look at this. So my window is a little too small, but usually you'll see 10. Since I'm zoomed in, it's kind of compressed it a little bit, but um, this is a cool opportunity to show off one of the improvements that we've had in the latest stable release of PS Reline is we can actually scroll through these features, so these predictions. So um, you, know, you can see the metadata line is changing based on where I'm going, and so I know I, you know, I can't get lost with it, but this allows us to uh, have this experience working in you know, smaller shell environments. This is particularly useful uh, in Cloud Shell, where the default size of the Cloud Shell is actually smaller than the amount of results there. So we've now had that working, and uh, this is available in Cloud Shell very easily for you. But um, let's start. Let's start doing some some cool stuff with it. Where let's start importing other pre other predictors. So I'm going to import the completion predictor first, because I think this one is a really cool predictor that uh, I feel like is not super well known. The, it's a very, very simple predictor. All it does is utilize tab completion to help populate the predictions, uh, the prediction field. So uh, this is, you know, let me do this. I'm gonna go back to list view, get child item. Um, it will use uh, tab completion to uh, auto complete the uh, predictions there. So I've not just typed get child item dash path. It knows that from the tab completion, that's the first parameter available to me. It becomes really, really cool when we press F2 here and I can start kind of navigating and seeing the different kinds of parameters that are available to this particular commandlet. Um, and I find it really cool because we also have this thing uh, called a tooltip, which gives a little bit more details about what the prediction uh, result is giving you. And in this case, it's telling you the different kinds of values that this, these parameters give. So the force parameter is a switch, name shows the attributes, going through it shows the different uh, values there, but uh, predictors can have this be any sort of content. And so this is also pretty cool if you're working with like uh, objects here. If I do something like this, something like this where I want to explore the different methods um, in this particular area here. You'll see I can see the different methods and um, uh, the, the, the results that they return um, available to me. And so this is pretty helpful if I'm just kind of exploring. Personally, I use it a lot to make sure I check the, the values uh, of some of the parameters and stuff. So 
um, it's kind of a more dynamic way to investigate what's going on with this commandlet without having to run get help and kind of, of course that's still an option, but it's a little bit more like as you're typing a way to assist you. Um, so this is a pretty cool thing. I can also press F4 here to actually full screen the tooltips if people want to add prediction tooltips that are much longer than a single line. Um, that's possible. Um, oh, all right. But um, yeah, that's the, the completion predictor. So we have this open source online and I'll have a whole uh, slide of links that you guys can check out later. One other one I just want to show off is the uh, AZ predictor. So this is a predictor that utilizes uh, machine learning to actually give, give predictions uh, that you've never ever typed before. So um, I'll import this module and then if I start typing here, and I'll do F2 so you can see some other results here, uh, we always reserve the top couple to history unless you disable that experience, but um, uh, we just think history is kind of the most relevant that you, that you have. This is of course configurable, but as I start going down, you'll start seeing more um, AZ specific commands. So this is a module specific to uh, giving you more um, suggestions of AZ commands that you can use. And so I've just typed, you know, I just started typing GE. And so I got a whole bunch of just commandlets, but if I wanna go a little further, I can, you know, accept this commandlet and kind of, you know, take a look at the different parameters and, uh, full line completions available to me. And this is using a machine learning model that is locally running on your computer and uh, is help, able to assist you that way. So this is an example of a predictor that really um, takes a more advanced approach of what it's trying to predict to you. But uh, as you can see, a predictor can be as simple as tab completion or it can be as complex as a machine learning or kind of anything in between. Um, we've created a bunch of great documentation on how to create uh, a, a predictor in PS Readline. Um, if you go down here, we have some documentation on how to create a command line predictor. And so um, we have a bunch of sample predictors if people are interested in building them out. I know there's a number of community ones out there uh, that may be specific to a particular uh, commandlet set of things. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's all sorts of stuff there. Let me see, anything I missed with this score? Um, no, so the predictions have to be written in C Sharp because we, it utilizes an interface that PowerShell exposes. Um, so uh, it will be needed to uh, be written in, in C Sharp. Um, yeah. Justin yeah, Justin Grody does have a bit of a workaround, but uh, it's the, the best way to do it is, is with, with C Sharp to, to utilize it. But uh, the, our documentation makes it pretty easy. You can just download a simple sample project and kind of work with it that way. Um, one thing I will note, predictions, we do, one of the biggest limitations, so um, <laughs> one, one of the number one questions I get is, can't I just plug in predictors to OpenAI? Or like, can I just plug it into, you create a predictor with OpenAI or you know some of these larger uh, LLMs out there. Yes, but we do have a very strict timeout um, because we we value very much the the user experience that people have in PowerShell. We have to have a timeout um, for getting prediction results so that we do not lag your uh, experience. So I believe that timeout is is it's like twenty milliseconds. So it's it's too quick. It's too short to make any calls off box. So that's why I want to highlight the AZ predictor, which is actually a locally built machine learning model that uh, gives you that prediction. So um, I think there's more and more kind of movement around models that can be uh, built locally and, and kind of in a small way. So um, I'm hope we're hoping to see more of an emergence of these more advanced predictors with models that can be run locally and meet those timeout requirements. Um, cool. Oh, I see a couple questions, yeah. Um, that's a good question. I am not familiar with uh, too many other um, Microsoft Teams working on predictors. We have AZ and then there's been a number of community folks. I know the, the, the PNP PowerShell module has one. 
Um, but it, it's something that we can work with teams uh, with uh, a little bit. It's it's uh, mainly around their, their appetite to to invest into building this kind of uh, predictor. Um, Mm. Well, that could be a good idea for like a tooltip too, right? It's like this, yeah, this, this this command needs predictions. And we, we've explored ideas of like how we can incorporate some of that advancements with the AZ predictor. Um, it's just something that we, we haven't exactly gotten to yet. Is, is there a way to do tooltips without doing predictions? No. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what you... Oh. The example there is I need to know what positions I need. I don't actually need a prediction for that. I just need a tooltip that says, hey, remember that you need this for that. So you're saying, like, say say this experience, but like beneath it, right, there's some kind of rendering yeah, of that tooltip? There'd be that little tooltip without, without needing the suggestion of some kind of command that you have. Yeah, it knows the command that you have, and based on that, that, um, is interesting. <laughs> I'm going to take note of that. <laughs> I have a follow up question. Sure. In that example, the second line on your screen, there's tokens. Mm -hmm. Have you built in a key for swapping back and forth between those tokens so I can just build them into something else? <laughs> you're, you're, yes, yes, we have. <laughs> um, so that's a great question. So uh, let me do. Uh, let me just get maybe a more complex one here, something like this. Okay, I'll do this. Um, I can press Alt A and actually tab between all of these different uh, keys. So um, this is uh, very helpful. So I don't have to like you know tap the arrow key all the time and, and go to these particular areas. So I can say yeah, this resource group is test RG, and then I can tap Control A, go name it, Stevens. Sorry, a alt a. I'm on the Mac, so my key bindings are a little weird. It's it's alt a. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I have it keyed differently for me because I'm on a different keyboard layout, which you can configure with PS3 line key handlers. But yes, on Windows it is alt a. Okay, um, last last follow up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's let's try it. So if I do this, I'm just gonna this is sneak peek of the next, but if I do it looks like it will tab through uh the sub commands there if for a native command. So the problem was that it it included all of the backslash Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's like we only want to include the, the, the JSON uh section, but um yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's uh that's that's uh great to know. Okay. Yeah, that's a good good feedback. And I know with uh cube cuddle or cube control, however you pronounce it, that would be helpful as well. So it's, I saw another hand. You can definitely do that. Like, yeah, that, that's something that is definitely doable as far as a predictor. That's not something that we've built, but um, actually there was a community member who did that. Oh gosh, I'm gonna blank on who it was and I'm gonna have to dig it up, but I know there was a community member building something very similar to that. Yeah. Do you remember who it was? Um, I can find it. I can find it too, but anyways. Yeah, so it would utilize the, the help system that you had in the examples of those particular commandlets to help assist you in that way. Um, so that the predictions would actually take from the examples of those commands. Um, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll follow up on that. No. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, with the completion, the completion predictor will. Yeah. So I should clarify, you do have to install the completion predictor. That is not a, uh, a, a capability native to PowerShell right now. So you will have to install the completion predictor and import it. So if you just import it into your profile, then it will happen you know, natively. But yeah, that's something. And it will also work with variables. So if I've defined a variable, it will know that I can like tab complete that variable and the methods there. So yeah, that does work. Um, cool. Okay, so um, I'm gonna shift a little bit to, oh, okay. I wanted to highlight two other quick things with PS Relay that I thought are, are, are pretty cool. Um, one thing is the history handler. So PS Relay has a lot of cool features and I'm actually going to jump to VS Code here and get this script block here. But um, a question I get a lot with the history predictor is, oh, what if I put a secret in my history? Like I don't really want that being shown. I don't want that saved to my history file. I don't want that to be accidentally exposed or leaked somehow. Um, and that's completely valid. Like, so what we, um, what we have in PS Reline is a, um, is a way to uh, trigger a handler every time we try to add a command to your history. So I've just created this simple script block here that takes the line and it checks if the word key is in it. If it is, return false, otherwise return true. And so what that means is if I type something like key, you know, my key, I don't want this showing up in my history file or my history predictor stuff. So once I do that, like, oh wait, it's still gonna show up because I didn't set it. You'll still, <laughs> um, so right now you'll see it here. Like we don't want that. So let's do set PS reline option, add to history handler, um, script block. So this is adding the script block that I just defined um, to my PS reline option for this particular session. If you want it persistently, you gotta add it to your profile. But now if I do key, you know, my other key, um, you'll see here that only, only the one before I set this value is saved. So going forward, nothing else is saved. So if you are worried about sensitive information being leaked that way, definitely utilize the add to history handler. We have some great examples on the set dash PS reline option documentation. I highly recommend checking that out. Um, the last thing um, I'll just share briefly, just because I think it's cool, is the, oh. Yes, certain keywords are already excluded by default. We do, yeah, certain key, like password, token, those are already excluded by default, but if you wanted something more specific, key, for example, um, would, would, all, would be excluded using that way. Um, uh, so you can get the location of the history file from the get PS read line option. So you'll see here, this is where my history file is located. And so you can just simply delete the file or go through it. Sometimes I'll go through it and, and delete something for, because I want a demo, but I want to keep some things. So I control F things, but yeah, um, you can find it with get PS read line option. Um, cool. The last thing I'll just show off briefly because I do want to get to the, um, actually I'll, I'll skip, uh, the last thing I wanted to show off is a um, changing the prompt text. So you'll notice when there's a parsing error, sometimes my PowerShell window will actually kind of um, show me that. So I, what this does is this set changes the, uh, what is it, greater than, <laughs> um, the greater than sign in my prompt to an X when there's a parse error. So it kind of like alerts me. You've probably seen this in other kind of prompt changers like oh my posh. So if I do something like, you know, var equals here, like you'll see that X appears when I have have some kind of parsing error. So that's just a small little thing that um, is kind of a fun uh, thing to do with PS Readline just to really call out uh, stuff before you, you accidentally hit an error. Your question. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so you can, you can change that. So that, that's part of the PS read line key handlers. So get PS read line key handler. 
Um, this will show you all the different key bindings that you have, and these are all configurable. Um, you know, uh, so you can you can change and mix and match however you'd like. So that's completely configurable. Um, cool. Okay, I'm going to move on to the uh, something new. Um, that we're working on called feedback providers. And so feedback providers are completely separate from PS Readline. They are part of the, the PowerShell engine that we're working on. And so we, we created these predictors and we were trying to be as preventative as possible to errors and kind of issues that you're hitting in the command line. Um, but we realized that no matter what, no matter how good we are at preventing those errors, errors are still bound to occur. And so we wanted a way kind of after you had entered to help assist the, the user. And so we've created this, this thing called feedback providers, which is very similar to the predictor ecosystem where it's an extensible feature, but um, it will trigger on success and errored uh, commands and can trigger on specific commands so that you can get feedback based on uh, the errors that the particular errors that you've hit or a particular command or combination of commands that you've, you've done. Um, and like I said, this is completely extensible, so you can create a feedback provider yourself. There's actually a great session that Justin is going to be doing tomorrow, um, going in depth into how to create a feedback provider. But this session, I'm just gonna talk about kind of what they are. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, the best way, yeah, so the best way to kind of show it is, the best way to explain it is just really to show it. So, um, I'm in, uh, right now I'm in PowerShell, uh, I think I'm in, yeah, 7.4 here. Um, this feedback providers are still in an experimental feature mode. So um, they're not enabled by default yet. We hope to enable them in 7.5. Um, but uh, what you'll have to do to get them is to, I'll just show get experimental feature. So feedback providers here, have to be assigned to true. You can just do that by doing enable dash experimental feature with the name. And then you also have to enable the uh, PS command not found suggestion to true. This is, uh, the feedback provider is the interface that uh, the engine exposes, but the command not found suggestion is what actually utilizes that interface to give a suggestion. And so what this means is I can say I just actually mistype. Um, I just forget the E and get child item. This is what the feedback provider does. So the feedback provider will trigger um, and on the command not found exception and try to find the command let that is most similar to what you attempted to type. Um, this is you know, just a very simple quality of life thing that uh, is coming to PowerShell that we really you know, wanted to do um, for a long time. And so this works for, of course, commandlets that you have. We also works for uh, native commands that you have installed. So I type DT, there's no DT on my machine, but I do have F T D U D C A T D like you know I have all this different stuff. Um, it uses fuzzy matching to try to match the different commands that you have available to you. So um, this is uh, an example of the uh, a built-in feedback provider that is coming soon to PowerShell. Um, but we are also working on expanding this kind of command not found feedback provider to um, other package management sources. So uh, this means if I try to type a command that I don't have installed, we can actually suggest to you to win get install that command. Um, you're probably, if you work with Linux systems, you probably see this often with sudo app get, you know, if you run it that way. We have built out that experience um, in a PowerShell module itself. Let me just, if this is just, I just moved over to my Ubuntu machine. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Um, oh, key bindings are all messed up. But this is a separate module that I've imported. So I'm gonna import the command not found module and then if I do, if I do Docker. I don't have Docker installed, but it will suggest to me, hey, you can install it with on the Snap Store or on apt and uh, find the different packages that are available for me to install. And one thing that we do differently that um, is really cool about this experience is you can connect these to the, the, the predictor interface. So instead of you know, me having to like highlight this one and type it, I can just start typing, oh, come on. I can just start typing S and you'll see the prediction results, or excuse me, the feedback provider results are put into my prediction buffer. 
So um, I can just simply accept it and then you know, run it and be on my day. So this is uh, kind of the, the connection piece that we really wanted to, you, know, you hit the error, we wanna give you a suggestion and we wanna make sure that you can use that suggestion as quickly as possible um, just to accelerate your flow. Um, so this is the, the Linux version, the command not found module is published and I'm gonna show off the uh, Winget version. I don't have it on my computer uh, right now, um, but it is coming soon. This is an example of it with Winget. I, the example is just, the GIF is just showing, I try to type Power Toys, it triggers the feedback provider and says, hey, I found Power Toys on Winget. Do you wanna try installing these ones? And uh, it then ties into the prediction interface too so then I can easily accept it that way. So that's, it's available now. Um, it's currently not supported on ARM64 machines, which is why I'm not <laughs> able to live demo it right now. But if you wanna give it a try, you can um, get it through Power Toys, uh, which is a, a great kind of tool that you can uh, try out new different ways to enhance your Windows development experience. But um, that is coming and um, something that we will probably have in box with PowerShell, um, PowerShell 7.5. So um, those, that's just an example of some of the native, um, the, the uh, native ways that we're trying to improve the interactive experience of PowerShell and shows you what the feedback provider interface is. But you can create your own feedback provider um, by, uh, we have the same kind of exact documentation Oh. Should have had this link before, but um, we've created great documentation on how to create a feedback provider, which is very, very similar to the predictor interface stuff. Um, we have a C-sharp project that kind of builds through uh, how you can do it. And then um, you can trigger these, like I said, you can build these to trigger on successes or errors and on specific commands. So you can see when Say you, you, you maintain a PowerShell module and you only want to trigger it when your module command lets run, you can do so and have it help guide folks to a particular way. So this is really some kind of quality of life thing that we see module owners and organization owners being able to use and help nudge people in the right direction as well as create assistance um, immediately after execution. Um, highly recommend seeing Justin Grody's session tomorrow because he'll be talking about a uh, feedback provider that he created um, and uh, how to go through it. But, okay, um, let's talk about one more, um, one more feedback provider. So uh, we've created something called the PowerShell Adapters Module. And this is a module solely meant to help adapt native command output, which is just text that you can't filter, you can't you know, work with like an object into a PowerShell object. We have a strong philosophy that it would be awesome way, way down the line to be able to automatically grab uh, native commands that output a machine readable, readable format and convert it into PowerShell. So you can work, it, it just seems like a PowerShell command, right? You can work with it and have it in your pipeline and make it uh, much more automatable, um, so to speak. And um, this is kind of a step in that direction where it is a module that helps uh, suggest when you have an alternate way to run this native command. Um, and so, uh, like I said, it simplifies converting native command text to PowerShell uh, objects. It triggers when an adapter is available to you. So adapters are scripts that can be written that just take an input and then um, uh, uh, convert it to PowerShell. So you can you know, do it based on, on the um, uh, different uh, ca capabilities. Of course, it utilizes the predictor interface. Let's just jump into the demo so you, it will make a lot more sense. Um, so uh, I'm going to import module Microsoft.PowerShell.PS adapter. And so uh, actually, maybe I should have, hang on. I'll show you what it looks like before, and then I'll jump to uh, what it looks like after. So say I'm using some other native command like df. I'm seeing my disk utility, like this is a mess. This, it, if I was to zoom out, it would look more similarly like to, to columns, but that's not something I can work with. That's, that's, not, that's not something I can filter out and use the properties of. It's just kind of a jumbled mess. Um, I can create an adapter to actually 
convert this mess into a PowerShell object and have the PS adapters module suggested to me. So I've written an adapter here that's extremely, extremely simple, where um, all it does is it takes the input and then it uses this awesome commandlet from our text utility module that converts from a text table and converts it into a PowerShell object. And so if you haven't checked out the text utility module, I definitely highly recommend checking it out. But um, what I can do now is if I exit this session, I do should still have it imported. If I run df now, it will actually trigger, um, oh, sorry, forgot a step. <laughs> um, how does it know to find this file to use? I have to add the location of this file to my path. So um, let me do this. So I'm just adding the location of, of that file to my path, and if I run df again, it will trigger it, and it gives me a couple different options I can run. So the it knows, it found that I have an adapter for my df command, and so uh, it will suggest, hey, you can pipe it to df adapter, and then it will give you a PowerShell object. So I can do df, um, df adapter, use predictions here, and so now I have it in a much more ingestible way. And so it's not you know, exactly perfect in this case, but it's at least a step in the right direction. It got at least you know, some of the file system names and some of the blocks, but uh, you see here it got a little bit fuzzy, but you, know, you, can, you can create these adapters to connect these modules that way. Um, the other thing you, you probably notice is when I typed it, there's another uh, suggestion here. The first suggestion actually is uh, to use this command line tool called JC. If you're not familiar with JC, JC is a JSON converter um, tool that takes a bunch of these well-known native commands and converts it to JSON. And then once you have it in JSON, well, that's easy for PowerShell. You just pipe it to convert from JSON and there you go. So if you have JC installed, this tool will detect that you have it installed and suggest when you have commands that are compatible with JC uh, to give you that suggestion. So um, this will give me the exact same stuff that uh, you saw previously, if I was to use my adapter. Um, oh, no, oh, format table. Uh, yeah, it's done it a little bit better, um, but you know. <laughs> uh, I'll show another, say I have uname-a. It found that JC, uname-a is actually compatible with JC, and so I can do uname-a, confirm from JSON. There we go, you got kind of my machine information on my Mac, in a PowerShell um, ingestible way. Um, yeah, I think, let's see. Um, you can also do this with like more complex uh, commands. So this is a, uh, an adapter we created to help adapt VM underscore stat. So VM underscore stat, it, you know, it shows the, it shows the output, you know, in mostly kind of a, organized way, but it's not exactly like tables or it's not exactly a, uh, uh, it's not supported by JC either. And so I've created, we created this adapter to, you know, find the right delimiters, find the right ways to um, uh, split up this text and it shows a suggestion, hey, you can use the, the, the VM stat adapter here and uh, be able to get it in PowerShell objects. So now I can, you know, select, uh, Actually, I'll do it with. So yeah, you can use it just like how you would kind of any sort of, um, keep always messing it up. But um, yeah, and so I can filter it and use it like I do normal PowerShell objects. Could cool. that PS adapter module offer that as a suggestion? Meaning you're telling me after I ran it, So, if you do have it installed, say I haven't run it, the predictor will still trigger. So if I, um, so like if I have never run your name before, it should be able to uh, give you that suggestion. If I've never typed your name before, it would suggest, hey, I know JC can do it. Uh, here's kind of a suggestion. So that's that's kind of how we're nudging beforehand. But um, typically, it may be after that users would really 
wanted to do that. Um, but it's it's from the uh, uh, PS adapter module. Yeah, well, I have it in my history now, so it's going to show up in my history. But you'd imagine that instead of history, oh, well, my head's blocking it. But instead of history here, it would say PS adapter. Uh, let me see. Uh, that's a, let me think. What's another example? So, yeah, the AZ predictor one will show, but I'm trying to think of DF. It won't work for Azure CLI. Oh, if config. Oh wait, because I've already run it. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, dang, I just saw it. I just saw it right before I, I swear to God, I did. There you go, there's if config. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I have not run if config. There you go, there's a better view of it. There's the, the PS adapter there. And so if I didn't, you can see here, I kind of cleared my history so I wouldn't. So it's missing the JC part, but that was, you know, um, there it is here. So there's the nudging there that um, uh, is kind of the pre-execution. So, oh uh, yeah, another question. Yeah, so first, like, how do you think this is kind of like the broad stroke for the tools? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, the question was around, uh, you know, how does this kind of maybe relate to Crescendo? And Crescendo is much more of a uh, in-depth wrapper with these native commands. These, this is kind of a, a quick way that, say, maybe you just want to use if config a couple times. This is a good way to nudge uh, ways to to get it uh, in a PowerShell object kind of case. And obviously, it's not perfect. Not every native command supports is supported by JC. Not every native command outputs stuff in a good enough way to create a very simple adapter. You may have to make a much more complex script and that work doesn't really make sense. So that's probably where, where Crescendo is much uh, is a better solution, especially if you want to use it much further in like deeper automation scripts. Crescendo is kind of um, uh, probably the better way to do it. But it, it is preference based however you like. But we, we um, want to help nudge folks uh, in that direction to eventually get to our long-term vision of being able to use native commands like PowerShell commands. Um, and this is just a step in that direction. So, um, yeah. Um, cool. So I think I've covered everything. Um, so loads of links. I know this is just a wall of text here, but I wanted to share uh, for the recording sake and uh, your sake, there's a bunch of links here on where you can learn more. I highly, highly check out, highly recommend checking out more the PS Readline uh, module. It's very, very powerful. We also include this really cool sample profile in the install location of that module. So that's very on your machine, but under the PS Readline folder, you'll find a sample uh, profile that has a lot of really cool samples of ways you can improve your, your interactive experience in PowerShell. Um, we, like I said, we have the completion predictor and AZ predictor. Both are open source as well. You can just kind of look for completion predictor, GitHub, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, feedback providers, we, we have documentation on blogs about what feedback providers are, how to create feedback providers yourself. And like I said, Justin Grody's session um, is happening tomorrow, 9 a.m. I think in this room, um, he'll be talking about how to create a feedback provider. So if you're interested in learning more and diving deeper into the technicalities of it, his session is a great one to go towards. Um, last, you know, last slide of other links. Command not found feedback providers. The Wing Get one, the Linux one are are available um, to try out. And then, like I said, PS adapters is available. They were previously known as JSON adapters. That's why the repo is named that. We're not referring to them as as that anymore. They're PowerShell adapters. So, um, just calling that out uh, to avoid confusion. But yeah. Um, thanks everyone for, for coming to my session.